If you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, late night drivers, truckers, outdoors people. What weird, unnerving things did you see out there? Cryptids, creatures, Bigfoot, Mothman, Jersey Devil etc. This story is about a friend of mine, not me. Anyways, he has to drive back and forth between towns a lot because we live in a very small town with less than 2,000 people, and he was just driving and talking to a friend on the phone when he saw a roughly 12-foot tall humanoid looking creature standing on the median on the road. He says that it was too dark to say very much about it, but that he could clearly see limbs and fingers on the creature, as he passed by, the creature turned its body towards him. Needless to say, he floored it and cranked up his music. He also told me that he felt a profound feeling of dread throughout that entire encounter, and he really doesn't get scared very easily. I was driving with him along the same road today when he told me about it. We did not see it, and there were no visible traces of the creature that we could see from the car. Thoughts? This happened roughly a month or so ago, so it was getting darker quicker for where I, 14, am, live, somewhere in the US, and my dad and I were heading home, and it was pretty dark. The road to my house has fields on one side and a thin veil of woods on the other, which, after a short walk, would open right back up to fields. I wasn't paying too much attention, but I noticed the car slowed down some, and I looked up and saw this thing that looked to be a person standing in the middle of the road. My dad turned up the brightness, and its proportions made it pretty obvious it wasn't human. Its legs and arms were almost triple those of its torso. It was just standing in the middle of the road. It didn't turn around when we pulled up to it. We were about 10 or so feet away, but it seemed to be easily capable of crossing that distance with little struggle. My dad, after a few moments, turned the car around and sped off in the opposite direction. I tried to ask what that thing was, even though it was obvious he didn't know either. The only way I think I could describe it would be as a heavily emaciated white figure with impossibly long limbs. We took another road home and saw nothing, but we both know we saw something that wasn't human. Does anyone here happen to know what that thing could have been? This was a few years ago, but my friend was walking me home around midnight one night, and we were on the main road about 100 yards from my neighborhood entrance, and there is one street light at the entrance of my neighborhood and then a big field going into the woods behind it. The field and woods are basically pitch black, but this being was so black that its body contrasted against the blackness of the night, it was really tall and super skinny, it looked like a stick figure, and I would have convinced myself I was just seeing things, but it had glowing dark red eyes at the top. It cleared two lanes in the middle of the road in two steps, and on the third or fourth step, it disappeared. I gasped and froze in my tracks, my friend didn't see it, and he was bugging out, asking me what? What's going on? I couldn't speak for like 30 seconds, and he told me he almost started crying just from the look of sheer terror on my face. It really freaked us out, he still walked me home. We had to walk right into my neighborhood entrance, where we saw it. The poor guy had to walk home alone after that. But anyway, any ideas on what I saw that night? I was completely sober, and I know for a fact that I saw this. So around a year ago, I had to walk up to my bus stop, and given that my bus leaves very early, I had to leave around 6am given that it was winter, I'm in the southern hemisphere, it was still pitch black outside. There may have been a very faint light, but I can't really remember. I live on a country road, so there is no one else anywhere near me, and there would be no one else walking on the road at that time. I'd also walked along this road at 2 to 3 a.m. several times before with everything normal. But this time I only got to the end of my driveway, where, just as I was entering the road, I saw a dark figure walking alone. Given that there would be no one else out around this time, I was worried. I tried to grab their attention by saying hello, but they just continued on. I was still terrified, so I got out my phone and shone my torch on them, but the second I did, they just disappeared. And that was enough for me, so I noped right the duck out of there. I started walking backwards towards my house, too scared to turn around, and as I did, the figure came into view again. It started following me back towards the house, and as it did, it started growing taller, its arms and legs became extremely long, and it continued to chase me back until I got inside again. I haven't experienced anything similar since then, and it was just a one-off thing. There wasn't anything that could have possibly created the illusion of a person, such as a pole or something, and I know what I saw. I still have no possible way of explaining it. Does anyone know what it could be? My husband and I went on our first walk this morning after moving to the country. It's not the kind of country where your nearest neighbor is miles away, but we are surrounded by trees and empty fields. As we got about 35 feet away from the bridge or road by our house, we noticed a creature standing on the bridge, just watching us. 
It looked like someone dressed in all black was just staring us down from the left side of the bridge. We walked closer and realized it was walking away. No matter how fast or slow we walked, it was always the same distance away from us. When we stopped moving, so would the creature. What seemed to change was the shape it would take. As we walked, we could see it hobbling like a drunk person. If we looked away, it would move to the opposite side of the road and be a completely different shape, like a dog or small animal. As we walked onto the bridge, the creature was farther ahead by a hill. It began to change shape and it stick like legs. It would walk but would not bend its knees. It was as if it was on stilts. We slowed our pace, and it began to walk over the hill, still changing shape. We got to the hill, looking ahead to see what shape the creature took, but it was gone. There was no trace of it in the distance, we can see a few miles ahead at this point, and no sign of it being there at all. We believe it was a skinwalker, and we're glad we never met up with it. This story takes place in New Mexico. I won't say exactly where, but it is very close to the Navajo Reservation. A woman and two of her friends were driving at night on a dark road. For reference, the location in which the road was is surrounded by dense forest bushes, not exactly trees, but still enough to obscure the surroundings alongside the road. Her friends were passed out, probably from drinking, leaving her to drive the open road alone. She kept driving and eventually met a lot of elk on the road and on the sides in the brush. Apparently there were a lot of elk gathered in this one particular spot along the road, and that was when she noticed something off about them. They had the upper body of an elk but the lower body of a man. That's when the elves or humans blocked the road and attacked the car, scaring the woman. She was about two or three hours from where she was going, another native reservation, but she decided to get the duck out of Dodge and made a U-turn going back from where she came. That was when she called the local police, and they escorted her and her friends back home without incident. A lot of activity like this is very common in the area, and without going into much detail, it deals heavily with skinwalkers and supernatural things of that nature. This happened one night in Alexandria, Virginia, about four years ago. I don't live there anymore. Anyway, one night I decided to drive up to the 7 to 11 for an apple fritter. It was 2.30 a.m., and I was wide awake. My toxic relationship had just ended like two minutes prior, so I was kind of stoked. So I hop in my car, and when I get out to the main road, it's absolutely dead. I was the only person on the road at that time. For those interested, I hop in the left turn lane to go down a little side street that takes you behind the 7 to 11 as I'm starting to cross the oncoming lanes. I notice some weird shape moving next to my driver's side door, so I stopped and looked out my window, and I got a really good look at this thing. It was trotting, the only word I can think to describe it, on all fours, its body was about as big as a one-year-old baby's, but its arms and legs were really long and skinny, like maybe 2.5 to 3 feet long, it had a bulbous head on a skinny neck, it was covered in white hair that looked short and bristly, and the thing that got me was the fact that it had hands and feet. So it continues to trot diagonally across the intersection until it gets into my headlight beams, and when it does, it takes off fast as hell. Its stride was so long, and it covered so much ground in such a short time. It got at least 50 yards away and jumped into some bushes next to the palm reader behind the BP. I have no idea what it could be. Has anyone else in the DMV area seen anything like this? I just saw something I can't explain. I was driving in my neighborhood and thought I saw a cat simply because something with reflective or glowing eyes was moving quickly very low to the ground. I stopped the car to get a closer look, and by the time it crossed the road and into a neighbor's yard, it had grown to be around 6 plus. When I shone a light in that direction, there was absolutely nothing. It was almost as if something on four legs had stood up to be on two. I never saw more than a shadowy shape and reflective eyes. Does anybody know what this could have been? A couple of years ago, I volunteered to help out at a store way out of my itinerary. I usually commute from the Hartford area to Springfield, Massachusetts, for work. But a store in our chain needed help, and I felt like an adventure away from my norm. The store was a lot farther than anticipated, and after a blah day, I set out home. The problem was that it was October, and the sun was gone by 8 p.m. A full moon to boot. And the road home runs by a state forest with little illumination for drivers. I generally don't like driving at night. I can't see very well. Because of this, I like using my high beams. After about 45 minutes of driving in darkness with barely any street lights and the full moon lighting the area's high beams, I was already apprehensive. No cars on the road but me. Ugh. Slowly driving because I'm afraid of some dead man's curve or something, I saw in the road a dead deer. I just drove around it, and the smell was pretty bad. And just as the smell drifted out of my car, which was pretty distracting, Something was in front of me on the passenger side running. 
It ran on two legs but had a gait that made it look like it was on four at times. It was human-like in skin color but had an almost unchy, spiny back and a bald head. As soon as I got close enough, it veered sharply into the woods. I did not put cliché movies on hold. Or look in the rearview mirror. I just got sick to my stomach and kept driving. I told my wife, went to bed, and decided never to take that route again. So earlier in 2020, when lockdown was going on, my girlfriend and I were getting bored sitting around. So sometimes during the day or later at night, we would just hop in my car and drive around and chat. Well, one night, around 12.45 to 1 a.m., we were driving this back road by her house that's just trees and forest for miles. The road was empty, and there are no houses, so I have my brights on going around a corner. As soon as the road straightened out, I slammed my brakes and saw an almost pure white creature in the middle of the road. I only caught a glimpse, but it was squatting with really long legs, super long arms, and an incredibly humanoid figure. The posture it had while squatting was very human-like, except its elbows almost touched the pavement. My girlfriend screamed, and within a second of seeing it, it ran on all fours like a blur to a tree by the road, and I just jumped into it. The area of the tree it landed in was at least 15 to 20 feet off the ground, and when it jumped, I could see it slightly stretching out. I had never heard of a rake before, but I told my best friend about this encounter, and he showed me the rake. I've driven by that area a lot since then and haven't seen it again since. I live in Northeast Ohio, and I got a new job about two months ago as a process technician at a dairy plant. It pays very good money, considering it's a 34 to 35 mile drive one way. After about 20 or 25 miles, I drive through a wooded area. Nothing uncommon for me, as where I live in Northeast Ohio, forests are common, and I pretty much lived in the one behind my grandma's house growing up. I work from 4 p.m. to 4 a.m., and the drive home is dreadful. Whether it's being tired, hungry, or the fog almost every night, I go the same way every day and night. I was driving my way home, I just left the residential area of my workplace and was going through the forested area. As I said, there's almost fog every night, so I'm on high alert for deer, raccoons, and such critters. It's just like every other drive home so far, I have a podcast on, am focusing on the road, thinking of getting either a sausage McMuffin or McGriddle from McDonald's, and sometimes look off to the side of the road for any eyes reflecting off my headlights. All of a sudden, I see some smiling eyes. Out of the woods comes a coyote. In my hometown, coyotes aren't too rare. I've seen them in high school but had never seen one outside of my hometown, so it surprised me. I start slowing down as it crosses the road, until it turns to my car and sits on the road. It sat about 10 feet from my car. There had been no cars I had seen since leaving the residential area, so I was going to go around it, but I thought this was too odd of a thing to happen to just drive away from it. I expected it to just get up and walk away at any given second. This is where I began to get very scared. I honked my horn, and after about 2 or 3 seconds, it smiled at me. I have my brights on, so I can see it perfectly. This coyote had human-shaped teeth. My heart dropped, and every hair on my body rose, just as I was recalling this incident. It lasted about a second before sitting up and running into the woods. I sat there in fear for about 5 seconds before shoving my foot on the pedal and driving at getaway speed. I didn't stop and get food because I had, and still have, no appetite. I thought the rest of the ride home was what I saw, once doubting, I saw it, but like I said, with my brights on and it as close to my car as it was, I saw it as clear as day. This coyote had human teeth, and there was no doubt about it. I'm very into the paranormal, and that includes cryptids. Is it possible I ran into a skinwalker or some genetically mutated coyote? I am Native American, if that counts for anything. On Easter weekend 2014, at 4 a.m., my buddy Brian and I were walking to my house from his. The town has three main roads, the front, middle, and back. We were moving from front to middle. We round the corner, and he's looking at his phone, and I stop him because down the street, under a lamp, was something big or tall. It was squatting, arms resting on knees, it was fuzzy, and the fur or hair was black. It looked six feet tall in its current position. Despite being under a street lamp, I couldn't make out very many details. It had pale hands, they were almost glowing. I couldn't make out a face, though I sometimes remember it being pale like its hands. Its eyes were sparkling. Not like when you shine a light on a cat or dog, but more like when you catch a lamp reflection off a window. My friend and I have cell phones, he even used his zoom to get a better look at it but at no point did we try to get a picture. I just kept thinking to myself, my phone stinks, it's going to be blurry. What if the flash pisses it off? We decided to just switch roads and continue on the back road. 
I could feel it watching us until we were out of sight. We never saw it again. Brian didn't see any footprints when he went back a couple hours later, and the next day it was raining, but there was a weird smell in the air. I wanted to explain it as a bear, but it was squatting like a human and didn't make any noise. I could have been drunk, but not many people are that tall in our town, with puffy or fur jackets to boot. My dad jokingly suggested aliens. In 2003, when I was 13, my mom, a friend, and I were driving down a road in the defeated slash Highland area of Tennessee at about 3 a.m., and a huge flying creature that looked humanish flew pretty low over the car. The only thing I can think of to compare it to is that thing in those Jeepers Creepers movies. All three of us saw it and were terrified. We were in a convertible with the top down, so we got a pretty good look at it. I'm not really a religious person, but it also makes me wonder if it was like an angel of death or something because that same day, about 30 minutes later, my uncle was hit by a car walking home from a bar, and we passed him walking about a minute before it happened. We didn't know it was him, and my mom was eerie about picking up strangers, especially with two teens in the car, but if we had stopped, that drunk driver could have killed all of us. All the things that happened that day still haunt me. I'm a very proof and science driven person, so I don't really even tell people about this because I don't want them to think I'm insane. I just needed to put this out there somewhere. So I was just out on a drive with my boyfriend last night, and we were driving on a road that goes through the woods. This road is located near a very large river and is surrounded by forest, but there are also houses in this area, so it's kind of a rural road in a residential area. Anyway, last night it was kind of foggy out, but as we drove down one section of this road, the fog got much more dense. I originally didn't think anything of it because, like I said, there is a river nearby, the river probably caused the fog. But because of the fog, we had to drive incredibly slowly. As we were driving out of the corner of my eye, I saw movement, so I turned to look, and on the side of the road, there was a lone deer. Since I live in a rural area, deer are extremely common. I actually really love deer up to this point, so normally I wouldn't think twice. As soon as I looked into its eyes, my heart dropped. I got the chills, and my immediate thought was, something is extremely wrong. I need to get the fuck out of here. This deer was huge, it had to be twice the size of a normal deer. It definitely wasn't a buck. And its chest looked weird too? It almost stuck out a little, and it was broader than a normal deer. And, Ike, this deer just gave me the heebie-jeebies. And as I'm thinking this, my boyfriend also goes, what the duck is that, a kangaroo? And we were talking about how freaking creepy and weird this deer was. He was saying that he didn't like the way it was looking at us. It almost looked fake, but it moved, so it was definitely alive. Physically, it had all of the characteristics of a deer, but I've never seen an animal that filled me with so much dread and triggered my fight or flight like that. Something about this animal filled me with the sense that something was wrong. And I couldn't even speed away because we were surrounded by fog, so I had to make a rather slow escape while trying not to look in the rear view. Mirror. So I grew up in the countryside of northern Indiana. This encounter happened when I was in 7th grade. We had a trash pile where we burned our garbage, and my mom had me take a bag out at like 10 p.m. I grew up in the woods around our house and was not afraid of the dark, so I didn't have any reason to be hallucinating or seeing shapes in the dark as kids do. I had never been afraid of the dark until this point in time. I took the bag out and walked the short distance down the road to our trash pile. I was about to throw our garbage on top when I saw something standing about a car length from the pile. Whatever this thing was, it was towering over me, and I was tall for someone around my age of 13. This thing loomed over me. It had to have been over 10 feet tall. We just stared at each other for a long minute, and that is when I noticed that it had dark midnight fur and bright red almost glowing in the dark eyes. I was frozen. Then it just turned and stomped back into the woods. It was very fast, and to me, the weight of this thing was making the floor of the woods vibrate. I screamed, dropped the bag on the road, and ran as fast as I could back to the house. My mother saw that I was acting like I was in shock, I could hardly breathe, and my mom was tuned out most of the time, being too depressed to even notice her children. My state of mind obviously disturbed her enough that she came to check on me. I told her what happened, and she let me stay home from school the rest of the week. Fast forward about five years later. I started living with my aunt because my situation with my depressed mother got so bad that I had to move. At this point in time, my mom was too depressed and addicted to all sorts of things. One night, my aunt had some friends from the family over, and I heard a conversation that piqued my interest. My aunt was telling our family friend about seeing a pair of red, glowing eyes staring in at her from a 10-foot-high window in her trailer. One of those weird little ones that is towards the top in the bathroom. 
It was in the same place that I saw that tall man beast thing. I told her what happened to me, and her jaw dropped. This was probably the most satisfying thing that happened to me. Hearing it from another person made my experience feel authentic and made me think that I wasn't crazy anymore. When I was in my first year of college, I lived with my mom by myself. My dad had passed the year before, and we moved out of the house shortly after. I was glad because I had suffered a lot of paranormal trauma growing up there and was glad to get out. One night I was driving home on Highway 111 North after youth group, and I saw something that still bewilders me. It was lightly raining that night. Mist crawled across the road from the cow fields on either side. The lights from the few gas stations nearby were reflected in the wet asphalt. I was driving about three car lengths behind a dark minivan with nobody else in sight on the roads. All of a sudden, I saw the van swerve to miss something in the middle of the road. I was going too fast, and the road was too slick to miss it. All of a sudden I saw, framed in my headlights and silhouetted in the glowing red brake lights of the van, speeding away a tall, muscular man with the upper shoulders and head of a buck. It was like a minotaur, but with a deer head instead of a bull and glowing red eyes. I clinched and braced for impact and then passed right through the figure. It was like it dissolved right into the mist. I am used to swerving to miss deer at night, but I should have nailed this thing on the driver's side. Nothing. I was too afraid to look in the rearview mirror as I gassed it and sped home. I was only a couple of miles away, which was both comforting and terrifying at the same time. I raced to the door and locked it behind me. I told my mom, who laughed it off but was disconcerted at my pale, clammy complexion. I only later found in my research a description like what I saw. The Wendigo. A Native American legend was terrifying to me as a child, but I had never heard it described like this. I had never heard of any creature like this until that night on a dark highway 111 that I will never forget. A couple of years ago, maybe five, I was driving a haul truck in northern Canada on a night shift. It has a second coffee break at 2 a.m., so I decided to get out and stretch. If you're familiar with a CAT 797, when you get out of the truck, there's a large deck and a staircase that take you down to the ground. As I got out of the cab, out of the corner of my eye, I saw a dark figure walk across the back of my truck. It's really not safe to walk on a mine road, and at these temperatures, it really piqued my interest as to who or what could be out on the road. It was too cold to be a black bear. I walked to the other side of the deck to lean out over the rail and see what, or who, it could be. I arrived at the other side of the deck just in time to see the figure walk out from behind the truck, walk up the frozen road berm, and disappear into the trees. Now I would just dismiss this as a coyote or a wolf, but against the snow, it was easy to see that it was exactly the same figure I had seen when I was 14. This one had been staring into someone's window at almost the same time of night, but in the summer. The next load, I pulled over so that my headlights could see the tracks in the snow where it had climbed the berm, but there were none. After the first encounter, I just dismissed it as my mind playing tricks on me, despite how vivid it was. Now I'm really sure I saw something. Creepy, lanky humanoid is following me. Around a seven-foot creature with lanky arms and legs. Hunchback. Hands rest just at knees, with no apparent long nails just long bony fingers. Rib cage is visible, seems to be hairless, and almost sickly in a way. The head seems too small for the body. It's human-like, but it looks weird. It almost feels like something is off about it as a whole. The longer I look at it, the more uneasy I get. Only ever seen late at night or just before sunrise. Doesn't seem to be hostile. I've seen it over the past week five times. Usually on the side of the road. One instance, I was driving home from night school, and it waved at me from the side of the road. Kinda, I see you, and you see me, last night, when driving with family, it was standing on the side of the road several feet away from my car before running right in front of it. Everyone was too busy on their phones to notice. Two days ago at work, I was in the drive through window that looked straight at a wall that I guess was the foundation for the highway. It was perched on the guardrail on top of the wall and kind of watched me in a disinterested sort of manner. It looks male, but I can't be sure. I'm scared and worried that it's all in my head, or possibly real. I'm not sure which is worse. Not a flesh gate from what I searched or a shapeshifter. Not even a Wendigo. Tell me what the duck is going on, please. This happened in the summer of last year. I was currently living at my dad's house, which is a small town in southern Illinois. I had driven the same path back and forth many times to see my girlfriend, and nothing ever eventful went down. I mean, I'm talking 40 minutes of nothing but fields, farms, and forests. You never see pedestrians on the road because there is nothing around there, no bicyclists, barely any construction workers. 
So anyway, I had just spent a day with my girlfriend and was feeling pretty good. I had a good dinner and decided to go home around 1 am I started driving back when it started to rain pretty well. Around halfway home, the rain was getting lighter, and I was going about 40 miles per hour as my car does not handle any sort of bad weather well. To this day, I get chills thinking about what I saw next. To the right of the road, I saw a very tall, naked humanoid-like creature. It was gray-skinned, long-armed, and had holes for eyes. I saw it for maybe 2-3 to three seconds while driving by, but it was enough to make me sob all the way home from fear. Eventually, I called my girlfriend and told her. I was still sobbing and couldn't stop checking around me. I've never had a hallucination, sober, in my life, so I figured there was no way I couldn't have seen what I saw. I tried to tell myself it could have been a strange person, but there was no car pulled to the side, and there is no way they'd be out in the middle of nowhere, naked in the rain, and still be standing. It was the first and only time I've ever seen something that made me cry out of fear. If anybody knows what it was or has any idea, please let me know. I still think about it a lot, but nobody ever believes me when I try to talk about it. A lot of people think I was just tired or imagined it. But I know what I saw. It was definitely real. I was out moose hunting and was walking back to my car when I could hear three consecutive knocks on a tree. I thought it was a moose knocking on its antlers on a tree till it kept knocking three times and it sounded like a stick hitting a tree, and I could just hear the knocking getting closer and closer till I'm finally at my car, so I started to sit and listen for it. I couldn't hear it anymore, and I thought I was good till I could literally hear it in the ditch beside me as it knocked three times, like five feet away from me. After that, I got TF out of there, but I never got to get a good look at it because it was at night and it kept its distance from me till I was at my car. I still don't get how I didn't hear it move across the road and into the ditch beside me. Nobody believes me. I grew up in eastern Canada, and I remember it being a chilly autumn day. I went out with my father and grandmother to visit a cemetery, and with me being the easily bored 8 year old, I decided to walk along the edge of the property. This was a heavily wooded area, and eventually I stumbled upon a clearing where there was a little path. There I saw it, about 14 feet away, there was this person crouched over. Knees to their chest, and hair completely knotted to their head. I yelled towards them, shouting things like hey, or hello, and they only looked at me. They had that deer in the headlights look at them. Then I ran to get my father, and when I came back, they were gone. I remember this thing being roughly the same size as me, reddish skin, black hair, and dark eyes. They were very skinny and looked almost malnourished. I always believed I had a run-in with some kind of feral person, but I'm still not quite sure. The way they looked at me would have frozen me if I wasn't so fearless. I could have been attacked, but we just looked at each other. I still get chills when I think about this, and I'm still looking for some kind of answer. I haven't been back to that graveyard. Thank you for listening to my encounter. My dad and my grandmother fully believe I saw something in the way I reacted to it. Although neither of them saw it, they've also had their own encounters with the paranormal in the past. Surely you've heard of Dave Paulide and his missing 411 books? He mostly talks about Bigfoot, and in one interview, he mentioned the tale of a child who had gotten separated from her parents in Yosemite, and when she was found, her story differed greatly from all others. She told her parents a dog man had found her, had laid with her to rest, had given her berries from his paw, and then led her back to her family. This was the first time I heard anything suggesting werewolf-type cryptids in the wild, and since then, I just stumble on more and more. This brings to mind an incident with my little sister and me, she was 16 at the time, I was 24. We were on the fairly placid highway through the Valley of the Fires outside Carrizozo, New Mexico, bound for Riodosa, New Mexico. As we rounded one corner, we both looked left in time to see a gray-slash-salt-and-pepper-fur-covered very tall, very muscular man with the characteristic dog legs, same bends. We screamed, I swerved, and we both thought instantly that we had seen a goat man, yet there were no horns. Some goats don't have horns, so we weren't swayed by that detail. He was wearing some clothing, in fact, the most notable being baggy denim shorts. I know that sounds ridiculous, believe me. She and I were dumbfounded as to how or why something so wild looking could be wearing clothes. It was late afternoon, around 4 pm, and he didn't hurry when we came into view, he sauntered on normally as though he didn't care if he were spotted. He didn't even look at our car, despite my erratic driving, when we noticed him. I drive by that spot regularly on commutes for the doctor between Albuquerque, New Mexico, and Riodosa, and though I've never seen him again, there is a small bluff right there with beautiful rocks in a tall stack that it would have taken three or more human males to lift and stack the way they're situated. I always see it, and I figure it had to be Mr. Wolfman who did it. Goatman simply makes no sense anymore. 
New Mexico is infamous for its goat man stories, so we assumed based on an idea planted in local history. We were driving to my friend's house because my friend's mom would watch me when my mom went to work. I don't remember a certain thing about it, what color it was. We were driving, and this thing seemingly leapt out of the ducking trees ahead of us and flew over the car away from us. We only saw it for a couple seconds at most. But this thing, being either a light tan color or a dark gray, we both can't agree on that part, surprisingly, seemed to be gargoyle-ish. Bat-like wings, human-looking legs that kind of dangled as it flew, and its head looked like a traditional gargoyle. Human-ish with some sort of snout. I don't 100% remember its abdomen, but it was either buff as duck like that Mothman statue in West Virginia or so skinny you could see the definition of what muscle it had. Last year, I decided to investigate this myself. I couldn't come up with anything but gargoyle or Mothman. But I did find an article from around that time talking about humanoid creatures seen flying around Chicago, a state away. I grew up in rural eastern Iowa, farm country, fields, woods, and small towns. This encounter happened sometime around 2005. I was a freshman in high school, and my older sister was a senior. We would often carpool since I couldn't drive yet, and it was a good 20 minutes to the town our school was in. It was autumn and probably a Friday night, there had been a football game, and my sister was driving us home after it wrapped up. Also in the car were two neighbor girls who lived in the area and my best friend, who was coming out to spend the weekend. I say out because we grew up on a large farm fairly removed from any town, although there were plenty of neighbors. The landscape in that part of Iowa consists of rolling hills, Grantwood country, and gravel roads. No streetlights for miles, just yard lights at each farm in the area. The night was dark, and I remember it being warm. From what I recall, we were all jabbering and laughing and probably had the radio blaring. My sister was driving with her best friend in the passenger seat. I was in the back seat, driver side, and my best friend was in the middle back. The other neighbor girl was also in the back seat, on the passenger side. It was a big suburban thing. Like I said, all the roads are gravel in that area and fairly hilly. So needless to say, we were going fairly slowly. We made a right turn, heading south, to drop off the neighbors. And that's when we saw them. Crossing the road were two large, vaguely humanoid figures. My sister slammed on the brakes, and, for a few moments that lasted an eternity, they were clearly visible, illuminated in the headlights. They were two distinct figures, but they didn't really have any hard edges. It sounds weird, but they were humanoid and moved like two humans, somewhat quickly with limbs swaying, arms and legs, but also slowly, kind of like they hovered or floated across the road. Visually, they were enveloped in a dense fog that glowed or shone from our headlights, like when a light beam hits smoke, dust, or fog. Their cores were more dense, and they dissipated outward from there, visually fading. They were very tall, I'd say around 12 feet based on our eye level inside the suburban. For what seemed like a long time, but I'm sure it was a matter of seconds, we watched them move up and out of the ditch on the right side of the road, cross, and enter the other side, moving from right to left and disappearing into the darkness. The second they were gone, we all erupted in screams, and my sister gunned it. Both my sister and her friend in the front seat had seen them, as well as myself and my friend in the back middle. The only one who missed it was the girl in the back on the passenger side who was looking out the side window as it happened. When we slammed on the brakes and then started screaming, she was like, what's happening? Because of that time dilation and her not noticing it, it makes me think it happened very fast. We all described what we had seen, and each person related a similar description to what I detailed above. I've been fairly interested in accounts of high strangeness, cryptids, and the paranormal for most of my life, but I've never encountered a story similar to this one. The closest I've heard was on an episode of Mysterious Universe when they were interviewing a researcher about crop circles, and she mentioned seeing two towering figures, glowing and enveloped in a fog, running across a field. I live in Lubbock, Texas, and next to my town there's another smaller town about 20 minutes out called Wilson. Me and my three friends were just hanging out one cold night and saw it was getting late, about 3-ish in the morning. My friend lived in Wilson at the time, so we decided to drop him off first to get the long drive out of the way. After we dropped him off, we got back on the highway, heading back into our town. As soon as we got on the interstate, we entered some misty fog. We had driven this trip plenty of times before, but this time we noticed something different standing right on the grassy median. The figure of a person dressed in an all-white gown with long, straight black hair was facing away from us. I was driving and decided to slow down to get a better look. The second we got close to the figure, it turned its head like an owl to reveal the pale face of a woman screaming at us, then jumped in front of the car and flew up using her giant white wings. It wasn't a gown at all, 
It had wings covering her entire body. I don't know if it was just me, but I could feel her eyes burning a hole in mine. The image of this giant bird woman still haunts me to this day. At the time, we were at a loss for words. We didn't understand what had just happened. In the matter of a few seconds, we witnessed some unexplainable creature, and just as fast as it appeared, it was gone. I had a paranormal experience. We are driving back home on Highway 50 between Lewis, Kansas, and Kinsley. It was about 10.45 PM we are 5 in the truck, but only my husband and I saw it. The ones in the back seat were asleep or distracted. But just driving already dark, suddenly we both scream, WTF, there is a man on the road? We both saw a man standing on the white line facing away from the road at some weird angle with blue cargo shorts on and hiking boots. He was white-skinned and slim. He was bald. Its head appeared smooth, no hair, no ears. My brother in the back said, where are you lying? Since they did not get to see the person. My younger brother wanted us to turn around. And I said nope. As I looked in the side mirror, I didn't see anything anymore. As we are explaining what we saw, my sister tells us she has seen it before, she was asleep and woke up to a screaming WTF, and it creeped us out because the same shirt shorts and description expect a different location. 40 to 50 minutes apart. She said one night with an ex, they were driving out to his father's ranch when they saw the same guy also standing on the white line, but dragging a suitcase. They did turn back around because he was being nice and wanted to offer the guy a ride. When he rolled down the window and kept saying, hey man, hey man, you need a ride. When it suddenly turns around and is faceless, no eyes, no nose, no mouth, they get scared and drive off quickly. Creepy thing, she was asleep when we saw the same faceless man or being. What does it mean to come into contact with a faceless person, and who are they? I dated a girl a while back for around 6 months. She was a pretty closed book, but after we got closer, I was able to press her for an experience she had hinted at throughout our relationship but never got comfortable enough to share. When she finally did share, it was obvious that this had profoundly disturbed her. She was only able to open up during a night we had both ingested MDMA, and even then, in recanting this, she became gaunt and withdrawn. She took absolutely no pleasure in sharing it, and the gravity of her tone has haunted me to this day. Apparently, while driving after sundown in some backwoods near Tallahassee, Florida, a white-skinned creature crawled on all fours across the road and scurried into the underbrush. The only details she could make out were that it was somehow female and vaguely human. Does anyone have any information as to what this might have been? This was around 2010 to 2011. This was a few years ago, but it's really stuck with me just for how strange it was. I was heading out of my house at around 6 AM it was summer, so I took my walks at sunrise to avoid the daytime heat. I had done this many times and had my walk down to a science. Just my muscle memory could get me through. So, shortly after leaving my home, I'm heading up this road towards the highway. I lived behind a school, so I was very aware of the roads and vehicles, even if I was distracted by something else. Which I was. As I walked down this road, I was going through playlists on my MP3 player. I was almost right on the first intersecting road by the time I found what I wanted to listen to and looked up. Everything was normal, and there were no cars to be seen, which made sense as it was a Saturday morning. So, I continued up towards the highway, where there was a sidewalk. But about three intersections from the highway, I noticed a shadow on the school zone sign ahead of me. Figuring it was mine, I just kept walking. I was only two intersections away when a disturbing thought hit me. I was walking east. There was no way that shadow belonged to me, and since there was absolutely no one around, there was no way on earth that that shadow was really a shadow. And as if it could read my thoughts and sudden fear, a figure stepped out into the intersection right behind the school. And the only thing I can figure out is that it was a gray alien. It had all the features, spindly limbs, an enormous head, gigantic black eyes, and barely a nose, ears, or lips to speak of. For anyone else, this would have been time to panic and run, but my military training kicked in. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it wanted. But I knew it had no place this close to my home and my children. So, I charged at it, hoping at the very least to run it off, or better yet, find some way to capture it. Of course, under both of those desires, I wanted to kill it. To this day, I don't know why I wanted to kill it. Maybe it was part of my training that had stuck into my brain, or maybe it was because this being was undoubtedly a threat, at least in my mind. I don't think aliens come all the way to our necks in the intergalactic woods just to hide behind signs. There was something going on here, and I had to fix it. The next thing I know, I'm standing at the intersection. The creature was gone. Naturally, I was confused. 
the sun was higher than it should have been, and a quick glance at my MP3 player showed that I'd missed at least 10 songs. By my best guess, I was missing nearly half an hour of time. Now, scared and disoriented, I turned back and walked home. It was already getting hot, and heatstroke was not going to help me sort out everything that had just happened. I haven't told this story to anyone other than my parents and a single friend. We all agree that this was something strange and that whatever it was, it was definitely not right. Even now, years later, I wonder what I really saw. Was it really an alien? Did I honestly try to capture and kill an actual extraterrestrial? I don't have those answers. And that scares me. But one thing is for sure, I don't think I got abducted. I don't have weird dreams, and I couldn't find any mysterious marks anywhere on my body. The only thing that I can't explain is a painful feeling in my upper left arm. It feels like there is something in there, but x-rays have shown nothing. Could it be that I was tagged by this creature the same way we tag animals for study? Another question I can't answer, and that scares the day out of me. This pain has not gone away, but I have become accustomed to it. Maybe one day I'll be able to get better scans of my arm and see if maybe a different machine could see what the x-rays couldn't. This may be a bit anticlimactic, but it's true. Some of the best stories get stretched out of proportion, this one is simple and straightforward. I'd seen something odd and always wondered what it was. A Native American told me it sounded like an Ishkidani or Stigini. Shapeshifter. Someday their cry means omens of sudden death, some say they eat people and animals, and others say that they, while in human form, throw up their organs to turn into an owl, eat the hearts of people, and re-eat their organs to become human again. It was 4.32 p.m., sun reaching the horizon, rural, ish, Iowa. Except Des Moines, everything in Iowa is rural, lol, my family took the same short highway route between gravel roads to go feed our horses day after day for years. I would look outside of the van at the various things passing by, and I noticed an owl. It was massive, bigger than any owl species I could think of, anywhere in the world. Think of an adult male St. Bernard or Caucasian of Charka sitting down, and replace it with an owl with a similar sized head and a tall, bulky width. When I saw it, it was turned away from me, and I noticed that while it had sparse markings along the chest and eyes, it was dark blackish. Peacefully, it sat up in the tree, almost leaning on the trunk. Then it turned its head towards me, as owls do, and its eyes were, cliché, I know, vivid red. It was still daylight, so I only noticed that they were glowing when it turned its head again towards the trunk. The glow of the red cast across the bark, which isn't very reflective, but definitely noticeable, it was one of the most surreal things I've ever seen. It didn't fill me with dread or bad vibes, it was just a giant, glowing-eyed animal that was extremely out of place. If I glanced back, it was still there. The other out-of-place black animal I saw was in the same van, being driven again in a different year. My friend and I both saw a large, solid black, spotless panther drinking out of a creek in the middle of Des Moines. Capital city, it was down in a wooded area, a little valley by the highway through the city itself. It was just so out of place. I looked at him, he looked at me, we looked back, we looked at each other, and we went. Did you see that too? We thought that maybe an animal had escaped from the blank park zoo, but we didn't call authorities because it felt futile. If there really was an escaped animal, someone else was already taking care of it anyway, right? Hopefully in a way safe for the poor animal, but it looked so calm, like it wasn't about to bolt anywhere, like it belonged there. Anyone have any insight as to why black animals appear where they shouldn't be? Location, Southern Maryland. It was evening, and my family and I were coming back from Chesapeake Beach, Maryland, from having dinner with my brother, mom, and dad. I was 15 to 16 and in the back right passenger seat, chilling with my brother. Riding along, I'm just looking out the window, and there is a little road that merges onto the main road on the left, so as we merge, we pick up a little speed. We are going maybe 25 to 30 miles per hour, and you have to cross this little bridge, and it's really bumpy, so we slowed even more to maybe 20 miles per hour. Once we did that, I looked up ahead, and about 75 yards ahead, I saw something standing on the wood edge, off to the right a little, but it was exactly at the edge of the woods. It had both arms on a tree just standing there, meaning that its right arm was on a tree about shoulder height and its left arm was on a tree about shoulder height. So its arms were basically spread out with its hands on the trees. It was about 7 feet tall, maybe even taller, and had a wolf-looking face, only larger than a dire wolf from Game of Thrones. It had really broad shoulders, very muscular arms, a barrel chest, and it narrowed the rest of the way down the abdominal area. It was dark brown, and the hair was medium length. I didn't get a great look at the legs because they locked eyes with me. It knew I saw it, and it saw me. 
I saw it a good distance up ahead and was like, what the hell is that standing on the wood edge? As soon as I said that to myself, I locked eyes with it. I saw it for a good 10 to 15 seconds because of how far up ahead I first noticed it moving around and how slowly we were traveling. Its eyes followed mine the entire time. It took my breath when I first realized what I was looking at, and my first thought was, God, that thing is ugly. It had very pointy features, and it didn't look like a Bigfoot but like an actual werewolf. A lot of people call it a dogman, but I'm more inclined to say this was an actual wolfman. I said out loud to my family, did you guys see that thing? Obviously, they were like, see what? Another thing is that this was in Southern Maryland, where there are no bears or other large animals. But I asked my family over and over if they saw it, and they started getting annoyed with me. I told people over the years, but I was only ridiculed and teased about it, so I just stopped. Back in 1998 or 1999, a few friends and I went out on Halloween riding the old back roads around here. We were drinking or doing drugs, just smoking cigarettes, and listening to terrible music. There is a very large mountain range near us, let's call it Clinch Mount it's a huge range, and some places have never seen humans. There's a really small town around there, with maybe 300 or so people. No stores, just a stop sign. We decided to go up to the old fire spotting tower in the middle of the night because we were young, dumb, and full of bravado. We made our way up, it's about a 35 minute drive and roughly a 12 hour hike to get to the top. There was a serious uneasiness in the air. Like that feeling before a storm. Just surreal. On our way up, we felt like we were being watched. This place is known to have devil worship going on, we have seen plenty of evidence. One of the guys up front did have a pistol with him, so we felt safe at that point. About halfway up, we spotted a small dog, no specific breed, just kind of a mutt. He or she had a red bandana around its neck. I can picture it as plain as day. We made our way up further, rolled our windows down, and could hear a very faint drumming. Almost like a heartbeat, bum bum, bum bum. It was strange, I've been up there over a dozen times, and I've never heard anything like it. I've seen plenty of carvings and other things, but I've never heard this before. We got to the top, got out to walk the remaining couple hundred yards to the top, and made it uneventfully. We did notice the drumming or whatever noise was much clearer there. We smoked probably half a pack each up there over the course of an hour and a half. It started getting very chilly, so we decided to head back down the way we came. We got back to the car, and it was quiet, really damn quiet. No noise, no nothing. Silence. We started driving back down. On the drive down, you've got to go slow, you'll go off the damn side of the mountain if you go too quick. The driver pointed off to the side, and we saw what looked like torches or flashlights. They were a good 500 years or more into the brush. I've been up and down that mountain many times. There is no road there. We kept going, and we got about one quarter the way down, and we saw that dog again. It kept getting closer. I swear on my life, my mother's life, and everything I hold dearly, this dog had the face of an old woman. It got closer, closer, and closer. We all saw it. It just kept looking at us. This old lady's face was on the dog's body. I can't describe it any other way. We got shit out of Dodge real quick. We started hearing the drumming again, and that was it. We made it home and shook up like crazy. That mountain is home to things we don't know about. I've heard laughter that was mixed with a horse, I've heard women screaming, and I've felt the ground shake from rumbling. It was insane. I don't go out there as often as I used to, but I've never gone hunting there again. My old roommate moved to California this weekend, and some friends and I drove over to help her move in and check out the new place. I left a lot later than everyone else, so I ended up driving alone. I live in Arizona, so the drive is only about 6 hours from where I live. When I was driving there, I didn't see anything strange other than a lady walking her dog in nothing but a bra and pants when I was filling up gas at a station that was basically in the middle of nowhere. It was not pertinent to the story, I just thought it was strange. Anyway, I got to my friends about midnight, like I said, I left really late. I only stayed for a day and left the next night. Before I left, I told my friend I would take her back with me since we live fairly close to each other. When we left, we took a different route than when I came. When I was heading there, I took Interstate 10, and coming back, I took Interstate 8. If you aren't aware of the area, there are a few things you should know. Interstate 8 is basically on the border of Mexico, and driving from probably anywhere to Arizona, if you could imagine, is all rock and desert terrain. It was about 9 or 9.30, and I don't remember if I was in California or Arizona at the time, but I think I was in Arizona. It probably doesn't matter too much. Anyway, as we were driving down this road, 
we saw this really bright light that seemed to be on top of a rock. These roads aren't lit, so it was really out of the ordinary to see this light in the middle of the desert. At first, we thought it was a lit up pole, but as we got closer, we got a better look at it. Mind you, I was going about 80 miles per hour, so I was going pretty fast. But when we got close enough to see it, I swear to God, it was a man. This thing, whatever it was, had a head, arms, a body, and legs, and it was glowing. Its whole body was made of light. I thought I was driving too fast because I wanted to keep an eye on the road, so I only got like half a glance at it, but my friend looked at me and asked if I saw it too. You saw a man, right? The rest of our drive was in silence. We haven't talked about it, but I can't help thinking I saw something I shouldn't have. This happened in Calaveras Big Trees National Park in the Sierra Nevada Mountains of California on Highway 4. There is an overlook that affords a vista of the Stanislaus River Valley. For those familiar with the park, it is where Oak Trees Parkway turns into Big Trees Parkway as you drive from the park entrance and head down into the valley towards the campgrounds. My father, my little sister, and myself, 12 years old, were in my father's truck, headed up the hill away from the campgrounds, driving towards the park entrance with the intention of going shopping in nearby Arnold. As we came up to this overlook, I saw at least four or five cars parked on either side of the road. There were a good number of people standing around and looking into the valley at something. The next thing I knew, I was gradually coming to consciousness from some sort of stupor or hypnotic state. It was like gradually awakening from an anesthetic. I was sitting straight up, and my eyes were open. I looked around the cab of the truck. My dad was driving, and my sister was sitting there. Both were in a kind of trance state, not saying anything. After about a minute, they also started moving around like normal and talking. We had exited the park and driven down Highway 4 almost to Arnold, a distance of about 6 miles. If I remember correctly, half an hour to 45 minutes were missing. My friend and I were driving around a long, curvy road near my hometown that goes across a dam. It was pitch black outside since we went at night. We got so far and decided to turn around at a church because if you kept driving on that road, it would come out like three counties away from where we lived. When we pulled into the church parking lot, I could hear noises from the woods surrounding us. It sounded like walking because I could hear the crunching of the leaves. She pulled out of the parking lot quickly after I told her because it freaked both of us out. We drive so far, and both of us go silent for around 5 to 7 minutes, like we were in this weird trance. She was driving and wasn't even watching the road the whole time, we were both staring directly into the woods around us. Once I realized what was happening, I started panicking, asking her if she was okay and what was going on. We turned the music down because, at this point, both of us were really confused about what was going on. I looked at her to say something, and she looked absolutely terrified. She asked me if I heard a noise, and I hadn't. She then explained that it sounded like fingernails tapping on the window behind her. Immediately after she said that, I heard the same thing behind me. Since we were completely freaked out at this point, she started speeding to get out of there quicker, and that's when we heard a lady screaming at the top of her lungs right next to us. It was one of the scariest things to ever happen to me. Okay, so this happened to my friend and me around 2005 when I was 20 years old. We had a couple of beers each earlier in the night, so we were pretty sober. We were driving on Highway 59 right outside of Houston, near an area called Kingwood. This is the first time I have tried to write the experience down, so bear with me and feel free to ask me any questions or details if you'd like. So it was about 3 a.m., and he was driving. I was in the passenger seat. It was a large three-lane highway and was illuminated quite well with those orange-colored street lights. In the distance, we noticed something in the middle of the highway. It looked to me like a man on crutches, and my immediate thought was that it was a bum or something. But when we got closer, it was apparent that it was without a doubt not human. Now here is where I will describe, in the most detail I can, what I saw, what I thought were crutches were actually its arms, but they extended well above its head. Large fleshy poles are what it looked like, very knobbed and non-uniform. It did not have legs but rather some type of abdomen or nub, from what I could tell from behind. Its head was very shocking, it looked like a bulbous mass, like a giant water balloon sloping to one side, very large. The whole thing was a rust-like color. I am not sure if this was its actual color because it was also the color of the street lamps. I would say a good 7 or 8 feet tall. At this point, we are completely freaking out. He's screaming, and I am yelling every obscenity I know. He pulls into the left lane so as not to hit it, and I, being in the passenger seat, get an up-close and personal look at the thing. Its body seemed wrapped in what I would call mummy-like wrappings but embedded and haphazardly put on, mostly around the abdomen nub area. 
but the face was the most shocking part. There wasn't really a face there, just folds of skin. This may sound gross or crass, but I don't really know how else to describe it. It should also be noted that it paid absolutely no attention to us. Also, the thing was propelling itself with those poles or arms and using its abdomen as leverage or something, it was kind of difficult to explain, but I could try again if anyone is wondering. It was also going at a very fast speed when our vehicle moved past the thing, it wasn't like someone running, but maybe like a car going a little under the speed limit. After we passed, I looked at him and asked if we should turn back, and he said no way. So the car ride home was punctuated with silence punctuated with what the f every few minutes. The next day, we got together, talked about it, and tried to explain to our other friends what we had seen. And every time we see each other, even after many years, we always bring it up to each other. Now I have no possible explanation for what this thing was. I have searched many times online, typing in every description I have, and I always come up with nothing. Back when I was a teenager, there was this girl I snuck out at night to see just about every night. Neither of our families liked the other, so this was the only way we could see each other. Anyway, we generally met at a church that was about halfway between our houses. That night, we met up and hung out for a while, and it started to get really foggy. The fog was coming in from her way, and it was so thick you literally could not see through it. It was like a wall of fog was coming down the highway. So we walked back to my house and got in my mom's car. On the road to my house, there was a church, and it had a tall street light. We looked back and saw a shadow cross that light, but it was so foggy we could not tell what it was. But whatever it was, it was big. Tall, very tall too, as that street light was at least 30 feet in the air. We got to my house, and we got in my mom's car because neither of us wanted to risk waking my parents up. A few minutes later, the fog started coming around the curve and started down the hill. I remember wondering how fog could follow a road and not just cover everything up as it advanced. In time, it did cover everything up, though, and about that time, the ground started shaking like it was a mild earthquake. The shaking got more intense as the fog got thicker and engulfed everything. A couple of minutes later, we saw a huge leg pass by the car we were sitting in, and whatever was attached to it kept walking down the road, all the time covered in that weird, thick fog. A few minutes later, the shaking stopped and the fog passed us by, although I could still see the tail end of the fog bank moving into the forest that was at the bottom of the hill on the dead end road I lived on. We looked at each other, questioning what had just happened to us, neither of us quite believing our eyes but being too smart to disregard what we had experienced. I let her stay in my room that night until the sun started to come up and walked her back home in time for us to both go to school that morning. Did I believe in giants? Not until that night, I didn't. Frankly, I don't know what the duck that was, but it sure as hell was not anything I would consider normal. That was 35 years ago, and to this day, it still terrifies me and fills me with a sense of wonder when I think about that night. My first encounter with this being. My friend and I were on our way back to my house when I turned down the road that I live on. A few feet down the road, I actually ended up getting stuck in the snow in that exact spot twice, about a year after this, we both see a pair of eyes. Orange-ish, yellow eyes. Living in Indiana, covered with cornfields in both directions, as far as you can see, I think it's an animal, and I start to slow down. The eyes aren't moving, like normal animal eyes do. They usually scurry away, or at least turn and disappear into the cornfield. Now, the closer I got, I couldn't describe how I could see the details of it because it was so dark. It completely lacked light. My headlights weren't illuminating the being at all. But basically, it looked like a crouched or perched skeleton. It was completely boneless, but somehow still huge. At this point, we're pretty close, so I speed up a little, thinking some jeeper creeper shit is about to happen, and take off with my car. Totally, we could have anyway, as we pass the being, staring directly into the eyes to see what the duck it was, it disappeared. Like a piece of paper. I was looking at him like, you saw that shit too, right? And every time we talk about it, it'll come up. I'll share every one of those stories here. This experience was about a week later. The next time I saw this entity, I was near my road. About 5 miles from my house. Same orange eyes. It was walking across the road from right to left, towards someone's yard. And when I say walking, I mean on all fours. It was completely black and huge this time. It had a tail that was probably at least 3 feet long. As it was passing from the right side of the road to the left, it stopped in the middle of the road. Mind you, I'm driving straight for this thing. 60 an hour. I slow down and it stops on the yellow line in the middle of the road and turns and looks at me and my boyfriend in the car. I'm about 20 feet away, 
so I'm slowing way down so it doesn't completely destroy my ducking car. It just turned and kept walking. But the thing was so damn huge that it glided through the yard. When we passed the house, the dog thing was nowhere in sight. This house had a security light and was well lit outside. There is no sign of this thing anywhere. The next time it was seen, it was by my boyfriend. This was about two to three weeks after the initial incident. He was outside, smoking a cigarette on my cabin porch. It's just a cabin we use to store our pool stuff in. He sees the entity standing this time. At the exact edge of my property, it's taller than the corn that it's standing next to. It was about the end of August, early-ish October, so the corn is very tall. It stood there, with the ducking same orange eyes. Watching my boyfriend run into the house, the next incident occurred recently. These occurrences happened back in 2017. I only had the two initial occurrences. I got a call from my friend the other night, the same friend that saw it with me in the first story, and he was frantic. He said, Cat, I saw it again. I saw it. I immediately knew what he was talking about, and I asked him where and what happened. He told me he was driving back home because of construction on the main highway. So as he's driving, this black, tall as figure glides across the road, and he's watching it move. As it gets to the corn, it disintegrates, turns into smoke, and travels into the cornfield. He watched the smoke dart through the cornfield. So can someone tell me I'm not a psycho and this might have a name? I haven't seen the entity since 2017. I don't want to ever again because of the overwhelming feeling of dominance and the devil. I'm not religious, by any means. This thing reminds me of something I saw when I did the Ouija board too many times in high school. It starts with a Z. I saw him standing at the foot of my bed and a few other places in my house, but it gave me a feeling of pure dread and death. Everything negative. I'm not sure if they're correlated or not, I doubt it, honestly, but the feelings are the same. I'm a 19-year-old male from the state of Kentucky, in the United States. I'm a college student, and my girlfriend lives back in our hometown, three hours away. One night, late, I decided I wanted to go home and spend the weekend with her after work. With my clothes and other necessities already packed, I departed for the long drive. Now, this is Kentucky, mind you. We are in the deepest reaches of the Appalachian Mountains. So, the drive isn't exhilarating. Lots of trees, small roads, and hills with not much else. I had been driving for about an hour and 15 minutes when I came up behind a vehicle. It was moving at a decent speed, so I wasn't jumping to pass it. For about 2 miles, 3.29 kilometers, I traveled behind said vehicle, an SUV. All of a sudden, something emerged from the trees. It was so fast that it looked like it had teleported. The creature was big, with black and brown fur coating it. But its most defining feature was its wings. It wrapped around the entire back of the car. Just as quickly as it came, the creature disappeared in the opposite direction, came from the east, jumped, or flew into the trees to the west. I watched as the car slammed on its brakes and pulled over. But I had already called my girlfriend, was having a panic attack, and was speeding up to over 100 miles per hour. So, I had no instinct to stop and chat. My only question is, with how close I am to West Virginia, did I just see the Mothman? A short while ago, I was driving on a road between villages in Ukraine. It was about 3 p.m. in the summer, meaning that everything was well lit by the daylight. And, as I'm driving, I see the creature run out of the forest on the right and just casually, but rather quickly, run across the road to the forest on the left. I've had a good second or two to observe it, so I'm quite sure that I saw what I saw. Now I'll try to describe how the creature looked as well as I can. Imagine a regular bucket without the handle, with the top being about 1.5 times wider than the bottom. Then attach two tiny legs to the bottom, maybe half as long as the bucket is high. The legs also have feet, which are rounded and relatively large. And then you cover all of it tightly with very stretchable white cloth, so that the general shape is preserved, but it's smoother, and the bucket's top is flatly covered. Now if you've correctly visualized all of that, you kind of have an image of what the creature looked like. As for the height, it was roughly a meter, three feet, high. If you have a hard time trying to understand what it looks like. Growing up in South Louisiana, I have always heard stories about the grunch. My mom would tell me how when they were younger, 1970s, to scare themselves for free late night excitement, they would slowly ride down Grunch Road, Evangeline Road in Mont's La, and the goal was that when you reach the railroad track crossing, you have to turn the car off, honk the horn three times, and then the true test of will was to get out and run around the vehicle three times. Legend says that if you do, the grunch will appear. According to my mom, the grunch was a pan-like creature with goat legs and feet, a humanoid body, 
and some say a human head, others say a goat-like head. Needless to say, she never saw the grunch because, no matter how many times they went out there, they would always be too terrified to complete the railroad crossing ritual. Getting out of the car was just too terrifying, and by the time they would shut off the engine and honk the horn three times, not one soul in the vehicle wanted to exit it, so they would start the car and leave in a quick, fast hurry. When I was a kid, she would take me down the infamous Grunch Road, which is right off Highway 61 and goes all the way to the Mississippi River, where it ends at Highway 44, River Road. 25 years ago, the first part of the road had no houses and was still very dark and creepy. The swampy, wooded area was pretty dark, even during the day. It just seemed like the perfect place for such a demonic-sounding creature to dwell, or to haunt, maybe more accurate. But after you pass over the first railroad crossing, you start to see houses, and the closer you get to the river, the more it becomes more of a normal residential street. Of course, now there is just a handful of empty lots near Highway 61 that only remain empty because of constant flooding, so sadly, the legend has all but died. I always thought Grunch Road was a hometown story, and as a kid, I was proud of that. We had our own scary, strange creature to be proud of. But I came across this article, and I was surprised and a little bummed out to find out that my Grunch Road was not the only Grunch Road. As I kept reading, I realized that my Grunch Road was not even the original Grunch Road. After reading and letting it all marinate for a bit, my theory is that some local parents or even older kids started telling the story and adding their own twist. Apparently, there are multiple different Grunch Roads around in southeast Louisiana. I guess the story was passed down, and you would just reference the most dreadful road near you as the Grunch Road. The road is not the only detail that varies in these different versions. The Grunch himself is described as many different creatures. My local grunch was a demonic pan like Goat Man. Other stories have him as a chupacabra type creature or a rougarou, werewolf. The most interesting version I heard was that Marie Laveau castrated an entity called Devil Boy, and when the testicles hit the ground, it spawned two demons, one male and one female. They attacked Mare, then disappeared into the swamps, where they still terrorize scary roads all over southeastern Louisiana today. The one surprise about this article I read that rejuvenated my passion for the Grunch was that while our version was more of a local urban legend, the real Grunch Road was called it because they were actual sightings of a creature they named the Grunch. There were other reports of sightings more recently after Hurricane Katrina on the abandoned golf course in City Park. From what I read, the original Grunch Road story was inspired by a creature that seemed very chupacabra-like. And also, in the most recent 2005, Katrina was described as a chupacabra-type creature. One of the more frightening anecdotes was that people were seeing the Grunch running alongside and sometimes even attacking their vehicle. This version of the Grunch was a dog-like creature. After taking all of this into account, it seems to me that the Grunch must be the local nomenclature for any weird cryptid creature. Has anyone else heard of or had their own Grunch legend? It's currently 3 a.m. My family and I were driving back home. My little sister, 5, kept on crying, saying she needed to use the bathroom, so we pulled over so she could. My mom was outside holding her, and I was on my phone trying to text my crush, and I just heard, oh hell no. Then I saw her trying to climb back in the car with my little sister expeditiously, and she started freaking out, saying, just drive, hurry. So my dad started driving, and then we heard an odd sound, it wasn't like an animal sound but possibly human, which wouldn't make sense since we were 14 miles away from the nearest town and there were no houses nearby. When we asked my mom what happened, she said she saw a figure, a tall, buff thing with horns or antlers. Walking towards us on two legs. Now, someone explained to me what the actual duck is that? The first thing that came to mind was the skinwalker, which I was just joking about after that incident. Low key, though I was freaking out. After we start driving away, the lights in the car go on, then they go back off while we just keep driving. I low key thought that the skinwalker shit was still a joke, but my mom believes it's a demon. My stepdad thinks it's because we touched some patriotic cards from my mom's cousin. He believes it brought us bad luck. I don't know what it was. Okay, so I live in a small Mississippi town, and it's super common for the teenagers here to drive around in this particular set of woods referred to as the Boogie Woods. There are quite a few tales surrounding it, most of which are about the cemetery, the plantation house in the center of the woods, or even the church where they hold the KKK meetings. Underneath the church, there's a gap about four feet tall that they sit in. It's not uncommon to get spooked out there at night, which is how it got its name. There even used to be a sign at the entrance, with the O's in boogie shaped like eyes. I guess that's enough of an explanation for you to get the mood of these woods. I don't scare easily when it comes to things like that, especially not around my friends. I felt comfortable that night, we weren't worried about anything bad happening, 
We had been driving these gravel roads since we learned to drive. We rounded the first big curve and saw a man with a mask on, holding a knife and a cigarette. I'll admit, that was kind of creepy, but it was probably just someone on meth, as that's pretty common in my area. We rounded the next curve and were driving past a corn field, which was only about two feet high at this point in the season. That's when we saw it. We all saw it, so I knew I wasn't just crazy. It was about six feet tall, built like an average buck, very muscular, and had an enormous set of antlers. Something my brother or grandfather would take pride in shooting. But it wasn't normal. It was on its hind two legs, and not in a way that it sensed danger. It was just walking around on two legs. It looked pretty normal, except for the face. I know it sounds like a load of BS that any teenager would make up if they got scared in haunted woods, but like I said, we had driven through these woods for years. We weren't scared of them. It just seemed so angry, and it ran away as soon as we saw it, as if it didn't want to be seen. I've never been as frightened in those woods as I was that day. Does anyone have any idea as to what it could have been? It was just a normal deer, but with humanistic expressions and mannerisms. My wife and I were driving down a very windy road at about 10 p.m. after dropping a friend off. It's a very wooded area, and properties are spread pretty far apart. This happened during the full moon in early February. It's very dark and secluded up there, but there was moonlight. While approaching the sharpest turn in the road, I began slowing down to approach the almost 180 degree turn in the road. There were no homes nearby, just a gate entrance to someone's unkempt wooded property. I noticed while talking with my wife something moving across the road up ahead, where the turn was to be made. My first thought was that it was dust from a car that had made the turn ahead of us, but that made no sense because we were the only ones on the road up and again back down. What I saw was upwards of 20 feet, possibly even 30 feet tall, very skinny, and had kind of a bronze luminescence of its own. I thought it was dust in my headlights ahead, but it formed into a massively tall, slender, almost oval shape as it passed over the road, and as it got to the roadside and entered the tree line heading up the mountainside, I realized a very large, skinny leg stepped forth from the shape and stepped into the woods. It almost looked like golden smoke, but with a certain shape and density to it. Needless to say, as soon as I realized I was witnessing something very unnatural, I started to say, did you see that? And my wife cut me off to say, you saw it too? All of my hair stood up, and I could feel the charge in the air of intense energy even with the windows up and the heater on. I became very afraid and kept driving down the mountain because I knew we had both just witnessed something we probably should not have. I pulled off of the road about a half mile away to discuss specifically what we had just seen. Our descriptions matched T. I had had a very negative paranormal experience as a teenager, so when she enthusiastically demanded we go back, I was very hesitant, but finally curiosity got the best of me, and we returned to the place where we saw this thing. I'm still not sure if what I saw was cryptid, alien, or some type of spirit, but I can say it was inhuman, and its sheer size made it very frightening. I parked on the road with my headlights shining up the hillside in the direction it was traveling, but nothing was there. We stood in the dark for about 15 minutes with the truck off, snapping photos and videos, but captured nothing unusual. 